This is a Netgear Wi-Fi router. It's the AC1900 Smart Wi-Fi router. And it is the R7000. So this is the router right here. We got the antennas installed. And what we're gonna do here is plug it in. Plug everything in that needs to be plugged in. Hook it up to the computer and install it and get it on the internet so we have a functioning network so first let's take a look this is a really nice i like the design of it very pretty basic but it's got like the slanting sides here that's kind of cool leds are pretty simple on the back you got our got a reset button you got our four LAN ports you got a internet port that's different than the rest Got our USB 2.0 port, a power button, and the power in. So, let's go ahead and get this thing plugged in so we can configure it. I always like to start with the modem. The other end of this line is plugged into my modem in the other room. And let's go ahead and plug it into the router. Of course, the modem always goes into the one that's different, or the internet, or WAN port. So you got all those that are the same, and we got this one that's different. It's yellow, and it's in a different spot, and it's labeled internet. That's where the modem goes. Now the router came with this. The yellow Cat5 cable. We're going to use that to hook up to the laptop here. You can choose any one of these that you like. I always choose the first port because number one makes sense for me. I always got to start with number one. You don't have to, but that's just the way I do it. You can use any one of those. The other end of this goes into the computer. Right there. Nice and satisfying click. Now we need the power. Power comes in right here. Now for this router in particular, but for any router really, um, if it's coming new out of the box, you don't really need to do this next step. But if you bought it like on eBay or got it from a friend, or if it's if it's not a brand new router, I recommend restarting or resetting it to factory default. That way you're not wrestling with unknown or improper settings from the beginning. So to do that, we're going to make use of this little handy reset button there on the left and this pen. So we're going to go ahead and turn the router on. You'll see the lights are coming on. So it's starting up. So as long as it's on, we're going to go ahead and press this pen into the reset button. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Well, it looks like it, it might have get, already gotten where it's gonna go. So basically what I do is I look for the lights to change, but it looks like they already did, so. I'm going to let go of that. Or I might not have waited long enough for it to. Let's try it again. What I'm expecting to happen is the lights to change. We'll try it one more time. It's pressed in. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 12, oh, there we go, they're changing. So now, what we're gonna do, while we're waiting for it to boot up, is, well, I'll turn it around this way. First, I wanna show you something before we go to the computer. When you turn the router over, You'll see there's these, there's a sticker 
Usually the routers have these stickers on them and you'll see the MAC address in the bottom right hand corner there. You see MAC 9C 3D CF blah 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 blah. That's the MAC address of this router. So if you previously had a router plugged in and that was on the internet and you're just simply replacing that router with this one and you're having trouble getting it on the internet then you may need to do something called Mac spoofing or Mac cloning. So if that's the case, if you're having trouble getting this online or whatever, you're going to want to get that Mac address off of your old router. Usually you'll find it where I just showed you on that sticker on the back of the router. Sometimes it'll be on the box. Um, like on this one, it's on the box. You'll see the MAC address there on the bottom, 9C3DCF. But if you can't find the MAC address, or if you if that confuses you, if you just don't feel like doing that, um, that's fine. You'll just have to call your internet service provider and tell them you bought a new router, and they'll help you fix it up. I can't really help you at that point. But if you are just upgrading your router or switching to this router, then that MAC address from your old router will be very helpful if you can get it. So get that and write it down like I did. I wrote mine down for my old router right here. And so we have everything plugged in. The router is booting up. So let's go over to the computer and teleport right in there. Woo! Once you're logged into the computer, you want to go to your browser, any browser you like. You can use Chrome, you can use Internet Explorer, you can use Edge or whatever browser you like, I use Edge. So let's open that up. And of course the internet's not gonna work as you can see. But it's possible if you're setting this up for the first time, this might, this might already work for you. You might already be on the internet. But if you're having problems like me, we're gonna fix it. So up here, you're gonna go to um, routerlogin.net. It looks like you're going on the internet, but you're really not. It's just a router trick to get you to the administrative interface. First thing you're gonna get is this license agreement and you're gonna have to agree. Then you have this other agreement. I agree, click next. Now it's going to detect if it can see if it if it can find another router in the network somewhere. So we just got to wait for that to do its thing. Shouldn't take too long. I don't know about you, but I'm not really a fan of this interface here. Like I don't, I don't know. It's just I don't know. It's just not as pretty as some of the other ones. So we're waiting for that to finish any time now. Any time now. Okay. So at this screen it says, do you want Netgear? Do you need to help? Yes or no. I want to configure the internet connection myself or I have saved router settings. I don't have any saved router settings. In this case, we're going to go with no. I want to configure the internet connection myself. And when we do this, it's going to warn us, hey, you need to know what you're doing. Next, configuring internet connection requires networking experience. Are you sure? Don't worry. I'm here for you. If you're not, if you're not comfortable with this, I, I'm going to help you out. Because all the setting, there's, it's really not complicated. So we're going to do this. Let's go ahead and click OK. So it's going to ask you to log in. The default name is admin and the default password is password, all lowercase for both. Okay. And this thing, I'm, this is for parental controls. I just do never remind me again and hit skip. All right. So at this point, it looks like everything's working except we're not on the internet. And that's the whole problem. That's what we're trying to do. So 
we need to do MAC address spoofing. Again, if you don't have the MAC address, if you don't want to do MAC address spoofing, if you're not comfortable with it, if you don't have the MAC address, at this point, you just call up your ISP and say, hey, I got a new router and I need to get it online. But if you have your MAC address, let's do a trick. If you have, if you have a friend or a family member that's like frustrated because they can't get this router online, you're going to come in and save the day. And this is what we're going to do. We're going to go to advanced. And then on the left side, we're going to go to setup. And then we're going to go to internet setup. And you're going to scroll down all the way to the bottom. And it says router MAC address. Now, if that person who is trying to, or if you, if you had a, a computer plugged into a modem and you didn't have a router at all, and that's how you were getting on the internet before, then you want to select this, use computer MAC address. But only if this computer that you're on right now is the computer that you were using before. But for the rest of us, we want to enter in our old router's MAC address. So we choose use this MAC address and we want to replace this. We want to get rid of all that. So now we type, this is where we type in our old router's MAC address and we need every, after every two characters, you put a colon. So for me, it's going to be zero, zero, colon, one D, colon, seven E, colon, zero D colon e4 colon 4d that's the mac address for my old router so we're gonna go ahead and apply now we just wait for the router to redo the settings and reboot and whatever it's got to do and after this we should be able to get online So all the other settings, it was already there. They pretty much went to default settings. So we didn't really have to change anything else. So now we just gotta wait. Right now my internet light on the router is still orange or amber. So I expect that about, about 75% of the way through to turn uh i don't know white or green or something oh there it goes it goes it turned white so now we got a white internet light so that's good so by the time this thing this bar finishes going across we should be on the internet looks like it's about done just need to wait for it to refresh there it goes now we go back up to the basic page and it should say we're connected to the internet. Internet status, good. Open up a new tab. Go. Woo! We're online. So that was pretty simple, wasn't it? It's just that little, that little Mac spoofing or Mac cloning um, trick that pretty much is all we had to do other than plugging everything in. So hopefully that worked for you. So let's just go through here and look at the settings on the, the basic side. You got internet, you got all these settings. Oh, we could just, we could have just went right there. It's right here too. So if you go to basic and then go to internet, you got that MAC address setting right there that you can change. You don't have to go all the way to the, you don't have to go to the advanced settings. Wireless. This is where, this is your 2.4 gigahertz network setting right here. You can change the name. And here's their password for it to connect to that Wi-Fi. And here's your five gigahertz network. You can change the name right there. I recommend, like here you see Netgear 31 for the 2.4 gigahertz. And then this one's just Netgear 31 with a 5G. So when you name these networks, I recommend you name one of them so that you know what it is so this one you know it's the 5g and this one's not because this one says 5g on it because when you look at your when you look at the wi-fi list it'll show both of these right next to each other and you won't know which one's which unless you tag it somehow or name it 
completely different so you know if it's 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz so this is where you change your wireless settings uh, attach devices quality of service QoS parental control parental controls ready share I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of this interface. Um, I mean, it works. It's okay. I'm just, I don't know. It's not even that big of a deal. Not, I'm just being picky. Go advance. You got WPS. You got a whole bunch more settings in here. Your wireless setup again. You set up your wireless settings, QoS. Device name. This is the name of your router. USB functions. If you have a uh, device plugged in here, you can configure different settings for that. No USB drive. Administration. You can reboot the router right here. Got logs. You can change your password. This is your password for the administrative interface to get to get into this to change the settings. Update the router. Advanced setup. There's all kinds of stuff in here. Yeah, VLANs, VPNs. A lot of this stuff you won't really be messing with unless you know what it's for. <laughs> Hopefully, port forwarding. This is what uh, a lot of gamers use and people that have servers so they can access the stuff from outside the network. Uh, you can turn, you can change the mode of the router into different, different modes. You have static routes, remote management, all kinds of stuff in here. Traffic meter. So this isn't really meant to be a walkthrough of all the settings. It's just kind of, I'm just kind of showing you what the interface is like. So we got it online, we're on Google. Uh, we did Mac spoofing and we got it to work because we used to have a different router that worked and this, we had to use Mac spoofing to get this one online. So I hope you enjoyed the video and I hope you learned something. Have a wonderful rest of your day and thank you for watching. Peace.